I'm going to do a quick review of Capture Notes, a uh, note-taking application that does uh, note-taking and audio capture for the iPad. So we'll jump right into it here. Capture Notes, uh, when you first open the application, you see it has binders, and each binder then contains multiple notebooks or can contain multiple notebooks. They have a help file here, which uh, is real nice, and it's multiple notebooks there where you can go ahead and get in and get answers to any questions you have about the application. And when you want to create a new binder, you just click the Create New Binder. You're able to select a color uh, for the binder, so we'll select that one. If you hold your finger down over the a uh, title and click the pencil there, you can go ahead and edit the name. So we'll just call this one Demo Binder or Demo. You can add a subtitle or notes also about the binder there. Okay, so you have that done. Once you open the application up, uh, you're able to get an automatic notebook number one you can hit add and it'll just keep adding you change the name of the notebook the same way hit that icon and you can change the name subtitle and so on that center uh, button there allows you to move the notebook to a different binder or you can send it to the trash and then obviously done here uh, one other feature I forgot to mention is the search button here so you could search any kind of information within any of your notes so if I put in paragraph here and hit enter it'll search and find where paragraph was in any of the notebooks so a uh, very good feature there and uh, does a great job searching through all your notes we'll go ahead and open up the notebook number one and we'll just get started uh, this one's set to default to the yellow paper but if you click the paper icon up at the top you can do grids you can do all different types of paper uh, as well as different colors okay and the other button here is, we'll go ahead and leave it on that, uh, templates. The second one allows you to select different templates. So, for example, if you want to use the Cornell method for note-taking, you could have this as your template, and then you could just draw or write your notes in or type them. Uh, so that's a pretty neat feature if, if uh, you like to have a consistent template. Okay, we'll go ahead and get rid of that for the rest of this lecture though and the PDF files here you can import from Dropbox Evernote or iTunes and actually use your PDFs as templates as well which is another really good feature okay I'm gonna go ahead and start recording audio as we go I click that red button at the top and you can see the audio is recording what's really nice about this is I can scroll off of this page or multitask off by pressing my home button I could go to the web I could check email or whatever I need to do and then I just go back into the application and I'm still recording so it'll actually do background recording the only way it won't work is if you're opening up iTunes or something else that uses audio then it'll boot boot this off so that it doesn't uh, record it'll just stop the recording wherever you did that okay so we'll go ahead and do the pen tool here the first one you just select a pen size and a color and you can then come back to your notes here and you can write whatever you need to Okay, maybe you want to bring a, a tab over here and say this is urgent, so I need to try to remember that. And we'll, we'll talk about those here in a minute. Another feature here at the bottom, if I click there, notice how it put a white window at the top or a, a highlighted window. So now what I could do is actually draw my information in this bottom window, and then all I have to do is hit the return key or draw past the line right here, and it will automatically take me to the next line. Uh, so that's a good feature from what I read. People that do a lot of handwritten notes, uh, that's a good feature to have. And then the other feature that the app has is the wrist protection here at the bottom to, so that if you want to write with your hand against the iPad, it won't uh, allow anything to be written there. So it gives you something to rest your hand on. So again, another good feature uh, of the application. The next thing is the eraser tool. And you see I can click on the eraser tool here, and I can erase anything that I drew before so that's a good little feature to have I can hit my back arrow there and that's the undo button so you can walk through and undo any of the uh, things that you change one of the features I use most often is the keyboard function or add text because I do use the keyboard for typing my notes so I can just hit the text button and I can say you know this is text and it will scroll and it will actually wrap as I, as I write it would wrap through uh, to the next line so we could keep going like that and then you can grab that text and move it anywhere on the page that you need to move it okay let's go back to the pen tool now you may have noticed there were highlighters here at the bottom so I can click on a yellow highlighter and I can actually highlight that text 
if I want to, just like that, which makes it look really nice. It gives it a real authentic highlighter look. Uh, so I may want to add some type of a tag to that. Okay, and we'll go to the next page. The next thing we're going to do I use quite often is adding a photo. So I'll click on the photo button at the top there, and then it'll open my camera roll. I can either select a photo that I already have preloaded, or what I do oftentimes is I'll open my camera, go ahead and take a picture. I'll hit use, and I'll hit full size image because I like to be able to zoom the image up uh, to make it nice and big. So a lot of times what I'll do is take a picture of something the professor's writing on the board or maybe something that they leave on the board that they tell you is important. Uh, you know, you might go grab a picture of that or one of the props that they have, just different things. And I like to have more quality of the picture. So this is a caption. If I want to put a caption with my photo, I can type whatever I want there, move it to the bottom of the picture like that. If I resize the picture, it'll resize the caption. So another good feature. If I want to move it back to the, oops, to the top of the picture, I just grab it there, grab it right there, move it back up. So that's another nice feature there. Okay, and I could put a tab there and then continue on with more notes. Oops, those are highlighters. Okay, so whatever notes I want to put here, I could continue on with those as well. Okay, now. Uh, I may want to stop my audio when I'm on a break. So let's say I stop the audio. And now when I come back from the break, I'm getting ready to start my notes again. I'll go ahead and just restart the audio again and get back right into taking whatever notes are that I'm taking. Okay, so we might continue something like that. Okay, once we're finished with the class, we go ahead and hit the stop button. And on... Then when we look in our audio drawer here, we see we have two different clips. We have a four-minute clip and a 14-second clip. Again, we might have clips that are an hour long, depending on how long the course was or the information that the instructor went between breaks. So you could listen to those clips and go back over your notes while you're listening to them. Or the reason we put these tabs in, and what I like so much about this application that I couldn't find in any of the other apps that did record audio, is that you can actually tag the audio. So I could come here to when I was, whoops, excuse me, to where I was uh, typing this information or this text, I can hold my finger down there and it brings up a play button. And if I click on that play button, it will actually bring up that audio to that part of my presentation and allow me to play that audio. Uh, and so I really like being able to go directly to there. Now another cool feature in the settings, if I go to audio, I can actually tell it to jump back 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds when I put the flag in and that will actually allow me to tag the audio back a little bit so that I don't miss any part of the lecture uh, while I was pulling the tag over. So while we're in here in the settings you can export or import from Dropbox. All of your files which I really like if you link to your Dropbox account will export to Dropbox so you have everything always backed up in Dropbox. This is where you link either Evernote or Dropbox. Then you have your paper and your flags. You can create what your default paper is. You can also create custom flags. And then you can create what your text is going to look like by default and your pen tool. So pretty good features there too within uh, the settings. And the last couple things I want to show you here is that we can filter the flags. So I have uh, here whatever flag I ended up picking. I can click on it and it will actually bring up any notes where that flag has been used within this uh, notebook that we're in and so maybe I want this one so I just click on it and it takes me right to that section okay down at the bottom there's your flag library you have a business group education and then again your custom flags so you can get to those and the last thing I'm going to show you here is the email portion I tend to email this uh, quite often I'll email them I can do current page or all the pages or a range of pages I tend to do it as a PDF uh, you can zip it together if you want to do that and you can also turn off the background and it'll just put it on white paper with no lines if that's what you want to do. So uh, again, this is uh, Capture Notes 2. It's a great application for recording live lectures and being able to take really nice notes. I uh, highly recommend it. Actually right now it's on sale for $0.99 cents in the App Store. Normally I believe it's uh, $4.99 as regular price. So go check it out. Capture Notes 2 uh, in the App Store for recording uh, live lectures. Thanks for watching.